Hey, when you think about stocks that have really been on a tear this year, you want to hear about this one. Garden Health, their stock, first of all, jumped 11% intraday. That was just last Thursday after the diagnostic test maker boosted its revenue forecast for the full year. The firm also reported first quarter sales that topped expectations. The stock is up about 37% year to date. And the company recently announced a strategic collaboration with Pfizer to develop new cancer therapies. It is something that Garden CEO is talking about here at Milk. And joining us right now is Helmi El Duki. He is the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of the $5.4 billion market cap biotech company. We are talking about Garden Health. So good to have you here with us. Um, Quite a year for you guys. Investors definitely like what you're up to. You can see it in the share price. You boosted your revenue forecast for the year. What is driving growth at the company? Yeah, it's, it, we're really firing in all cylinders this year. It's been this journey that we've had for 12 years, developing breakthrough technology where we use biochemistry, DNA sequencing, and AI to see disease much earlier than ever possible in a tube of blood. And so we do that in three parts of the business. We help uh, advanced cancer patients, stage three, stage four cancer patients, essentially get matched to precision treatments without needing a biopsy, with just a simple blood draw. So we now test something like 25 to 30% of all U.S. cancer patients. That has been driving a lot of our revenue today. That's been on fire. Uh, we have, how, how accurate is that without uh, relative to an actual biopsy? It's very accurate. It's FDA approved. It's covered it's by what's very, uh, <laughs> you know, 99%. So it's, it's really high. It's very high specificity. If you see it in our blood test, it's there. Um, and then we have the other side of the business that's just launching, which is early detection. That's obviously the sort of you know exciting sort of uh, you know thing that people have been waiting for for many years. And we just got FDA approval last year for a test that can detect colorectal cancer um, with a simple blood test. Uh, for those individuals who don't want to get a colonoscopy or a stool test, this presents an amazing new option for them to be able to get screened. I think it's kind of fascinating. We all, unfortunately, have people in our lives, um, friends, colleagues, family members, where cancer has touched them. And I'm just curious about what you are seeing when it comes to cancer diagnostics, um, the business of how it is evolving, how it is changing, because that can be super complicated, super difficult, but I'm just curious about what you are seeing. Yeah, so one of the, the challenging things about cancer, I mean, ever since you know Nixon sort of declared war on, on cancer in 1972, is the fact that we've always been one step behind. Um, you know, it's growing somewhere in the body. You can't see it. You don't know where it is. Early detection is so important. Exactly. And the ability to see it in blood. So a lot of the we work with almost 200 pharma companies because we can actually see how it's evolving, changing. You think about COVID, how it's always changing. Cancer is exactly the same way. So we're able to take one step ahead of it, not just early detection, but allow our pharma partners to develop new drugs, which are much more accurate as well. How does that fit into the whole debate about healthcare costs? And particularly when we talk about big diseases like cancer, which are incredibly costly to treat. No, we, this is something we've founded the company on, is that I believe new technologies can lower cost and improve outcomes. And I think this is what's been exciting is that, you know, the U.S. spends $15,000 per individual in terms of GDP, or $5 trillion per year. We're 2x more than any other developed nation in terms of healthcare costs. And we're seeing outcomes that are not as good. We're about the same as Vietnam. So there's so much opportunity with these new technologies to essentially detect disease earlier, where it's cheaper to cure, and you get better outcomes. We just deployed this technology in England, in the UK, and you know they're very cost conscious. Mm -hmm. um, we have saw that w once we deployed our technology for screening of all lung cancer patients, we are able to improve outcomes and lower the cost to the NHS by millions of pounds per year. So this is this is pr there's proof there. This is not hypothetical. Do you see more of an effort, uh, not only here in the U.S. but in other developed uh, countries as well, to take a more proactive approach to healthcare, meaning much more of a focus on uh, prevention rather than just waiting for the diagnosis and, of course, the cost to treat? Yeah, th this is what I think has been very pleasant to hear from the new administration, um, Dr. Oz and like you know RFK Jr. in the sense that. They're very focused on prevention. Um, you know, the, the problem in healthcare is that um, we don't measure and we cut three times. We should just measure twice and cut once. And that's where we come in, into the picture. So we're helping you know, the developing countries in terms of detecting cancer earlier, where it's yeah. cheaper, where there's more access. And we can do that in the U.S. as well. Uh, uh, but just on a personal level, yeah. too, and, and this gets back to the accuracy. Uh, you know, I, I went through my own battle with yeah. cancer. I went through a barrage of tests over several months before anyone actually was able to tell me exactly what I had. 
and using a pro, uh, one of Garden's products, how much does that speed up the process? Because if I get a test and it shows me there's a red flag in it, yeah. do I still, I still have to go to, the, uh, go to an actual doctor and go through another battery of tests? Yeah, so I'll give you an example. What happened in the UK when yeah. we deployed our technology for lung cancer patients, they were waiting 120 days four months to get onto treatment with the, with the biopsies and so on. Mm-hmm. With our technology, we short-circuited that to two weeks. And that's because you're, uh, you're obviating the need for interventional radiologists, pathologists, all these you know, sort of army of medical staff to be in the picture. Okay. If you can just do that with a simple blood test, you can get to the sort of end result very quickly. So less, less intensive, not as much uh, uh, of the damage to the body to, exactly. to figure it out. As and just I factor, said, yeah. you know, we all have PFAL, like in our lives where this has impacted us. I think in my family, I had a mother who passed away from pancreatic. I have my husband's side of the family who has seen pancreatic. That is a cancer that you don't detect it often until it's too late. So can every cancer have an early detection blood test? Can you guys ultimately, is that the goal? Can we yeah. get there? No, you're, you're music to my ears. So the same test that detects colorectal cancer today, we just presented data at AACR, the American Association of Cancer Research, on 10 other cancers. And pancreatic was one of them. We're seeing amazing sensitivity, very high early stage sensitivity for liver cancer, stomach cancer, throat cancer, pancreatic cancer, lung cancer. And so this is just a matter of time. It's essentially just turning software on the, the existing test to be able to detect those additional cancers. I want to ask you just about, tre- and I know yeah. you're not really treating, but when you talk about leveraging AI yeah. and diagnosis, how is that also being applied to making the treatments more efficient and hopefully uh, less costly? The challenge right now is the treatments um, are very coarse. You know, it's sort of one size fits all, but every cancer is, is very different. And so the way we look at cancer today is like black and white television. It's very coarse and so on. Mm-hmm. With the technology we have where we're looking at billions of data points per disease, we can see the exact subtype, like 8K resolution of that disease. And so if you know this person is subtype A, this person subtype B, and this person subtype C, you can develop drugs that are much more targeted. But if you don't know the subtypes, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're driving blind. All right. Well, a fascinating uh, topic. And obviously, your company is uh, right in the middle of it. Uh, Helmi El is uh, the CEO of Garden Health.